Hello class, today we're talking about John Tyler. Okay. And John Tyler is going to be given a challenge that no president had faced before him. And that is the presidential line of succession. What does it mean for a vice president to succeed the president of the United States? So John Tyler was born March 29th, 1790. He died January 18th, 1862. His home state is Virginia. He was loyal to Virginia to a fault. And for his religion, he's Episcopal. Uh, when it comes to party, this is a interesting issue. For most of his political career, he is aligned with the Democratic Republicans or the Jacksonian Democrats, uh, but he switches to the Whigs right before he becomes vice president and later president. Uh, the Whigs kind of disown him, and so he his own John Tyler party by the end of it. Uh, when it comes to family, uh, John Tyler is going to be married twice. Okay, first to Tisha. And then when she died, he marries a much younger woman, Julia. Um, and in both respects, they're going to have a bunch of children with them. Okay? And he's going to have 16 children in total, nine with his first wife, seven with his second wife. And so he's a giant expanse of children. And he basically keeps on having children until the day he dies. Um, because, you know, men don't have a window of fertility the same way that, that women do. And then one of his children did a very similar thing where he had lived a long time, had two wives, had a bunch of children going there. So, as of August 2023, John Tyler, born in 1790, still has one living grandson. His other living grandson just died a couple years ago. There used to be two of them. So, his term office is going to be from April 4th, 1841 to March 4th, 1845. And during his term, there's no vice president. Uh, big, like, structural issue with the first setup was of our, our system was that there was no way to replace the vice president midterm. So beforehand, we had had vice presidents like George Clinton die in the middle of a term. You would have vice presidents like John C. Calhoun, who quit in the middle of the term. And now you had John Tyler, who went from being vice president to president. So vice presidency is missing. So for John Tyler himself, as I said, he was originally aligned with Jacksonian Democrats. He was a member of the House of Representatives from Virginia. He was a senator from Virginia. He was a governor of Virginia. And then he saw where things were headed um, during Martin Van Buren's term, and he switched to being a Whig. He got put on the ticket with William Henry Harrison, and William Henry Harrison dies. And this puts John Tyler in a bad position because his former people that he was in Congress with when he was a Democrat, they don't trust him because he's a turncoat to them. And the Whigs, they don't particularly trust him because he changed such last minute. So he's going to have a terrible relationship with Congress. And the people call him his accidency. And this is what we run into, is that it is very clear in the Constitution. The president dies, the vice president becomes president. The question is, are they acting president? Okay. Should there be a presidential election called early? A new thing. 
was unclear. So John Tyler does get Congress to pass a resolution asserting that he is, he is the rightful president, and there's no real mechanism to bring up an early presidential election, so he serves out his term. But nobody will put him on their ticket uh, to run for re-election, so he's basically automatically term limited. Later in his life, a civil war breaks out. Okay, he is in Virginia. And as his state secedes, he does not object. In fact, he is elected to the Confederate Congress. He dies before he can take office, though. Um, and because his state was in an open rebellion, he doesn't have all of the announcements and the funeral possessions and the burial that former presidents normally get. Um, and so he didn't have much of a strong legacy as a president to begin with, uh, besides asserting the power of the vice president to ascend the presidency. But he really messed with his legacy by turning back on his own country um, in his in his final days in office. And today he's mostly known for the, you know, the trivia fact. He's got a living grandson. 